back and we're in the last part of our interview with Neil. Neil, before we went to that last break, you were talking about, or you know, when I asked you about the most common questions that you were asked, and you know, there's this little voice in your head that's having another conversation with you rather than one that's coming out of your mouth. Why don't you actually sometimes say what's happening in here? Well, I have to, I have to uh, remind myself what I'm doing in the room. Yeah. You know, um, I have a statement that I've pulled out of A Course in Miracles that I use as the guiding principle of my life that says this, you are in the room to heal the room. You are in the space to heal the space. There's no other reason for you to be here. Mm. So I, I try to maintain um, my awareness of that and to make certain that whatever I'm saying or doing is at some level healing. And I don't think that criticism, even mild criticism, is necessarily healing. So I, uh, and I don't think that form is the proper form. I think individually, if I was sitting down with a person who came to me for individual advice or counseling, I surely would say that, because mm -hmm. I would say, well, you've asked me and I'll tell you. But uh, in, a, in an audience uh, with three or four or 500 people, it would not bring the highest benefit to that moment, in my assessment, uh, to say something that could be potentially embarrassing or mildly hurtful to that person, mm -hmm. uh, to call them out that way in, you know, in front of a whole room and say, why are you so involved with your own life in the, at, at that level? Um, so I have to look at you know, what it is I'm doing in, in the space. Uh, a great teacher once said to me, speak your truth, but soothe your words with peace. Oh, that's nice. Who was that? His name was Futsu Trion. He was a Chinese, he, he was an American person, but he was a, a, a member of a Chinese uh, movement of, toward mastery, body, mind, spirit, integration movement called Gon de Gao. He's left his body. Mm -hmm. uh, he had his uh, continuation day uh, a number of years ago. But when I knew him, he was a, a close uh, friend and a wonderful master. Uh, and uh, he said those words to me, and I never forgot them. Mm. Well, uh, just coming to the, ma the master bit, in uh, Tomorrow's God, you talk about you know, how do we attain self-mastery. And, and one of the things that was in there was we have three choices when we're confronted with behaviour that's not supportive. And it was to either react, it uh, was to um, take it personally and be too sensitive, or to see that person as who they truly are on that, that higher level. Which I guess is what you're saying when you're sometimes answering questions from an audience and you choose to see them at their highest level. Yes, you know, what can I add to this moment? Mm. You see, um, there's an old saying, no one comes to you without a gift for you in their hands. Mm -hmm. uh, Conversations with God has reversed that. What CWG uh, tells us is no one ever comes to you but that you have a gift for them in your hands. And I have always felt that way since, since my conversations with God material. But everyone who crosses my path has come to me to receive a gift from me for them. My job is merely to figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. So when I'm listening to someone in an audience or engaging with anyone at any level, my first question has to be, if I had a gift for that person, whatever it might be, maybe it's just a smile as I walk past a, the receptionist at a bank or whatever, who knows what it might be, but a smile, a word of good cheer, a, a short compliment, or something more significant. What gift could I bring to this moment that could cause that other person to have a deeper and richer and more present experience of who they really are? And am I prepared and ready and willing to give that gift?